If you want to improve your lead conversion rate, I've got four big ideas that I'm going to share with you in this video. Hi, my name is Daryl Evans, and if you don't know who I am, welcome back to the MindShift channel. And over the last 12 years, I've been helping clients and companies like yours grow to the tune of over 300 million in revenue. And I've been an entrepreneur myself for the last 30 years, both on and offline. So I hope these tips will help you. Before we get into the tips, let me get into some thought process that I want you to have related to this conversion idea because when we are seeing problems at the level of conversion, generally the problem lies a few steps ahead, which is what I wanna share with you in the four big ideas today. Let's dive right in. The first big idea and the first question I want you to ask yourself is, is who is your ideal customer? Second question, what are their pains? It's the person. Who is the person that has the problem? Get very crystal clear about it. But here's where the magic turns as it relates to this idea of who is the person and what problem or pain do they want to solve? You know, when I think about the problems that we have to work through at our agency and when I'm working with coaching clients, is they're really not clear about the problem that the person wants to solve. They're clear about the way that they can solve it for someone. You cannot be a master in your craft when you're trying to be a jack of all trades. So when it comes back to who you're targeting and who you're marketing to, you gotta get really crystal clear on who it is by being able to describe what I call their empathy journey or their buyer's journey related to how they feel. What is the pain? What is the problem? What's keeping them up at night? What are they thinking about at 11 o'clock when they go on to this little thing called Google and they try to figure out how they're going to solve the problem related to the product or service that you offer. So when we spend a lot of time with this, we're really spending time on the pain that the person has that would lead them into a mechanism to get them to want to journey into your world, whether that's so through social media, whether that's through video, whether that's through YouTube, whether that's through Google, or whether they're already in your network. So the thing I wanna leave you on in step number one is get clear about that person. Understand what's going on in their world from a pain standpoint. One of my mentors taught me years ago, you've gotta be able to describe their hell as good if not better than they understand it. But then more importantly, you've got to take them and be able to take them on a journey to see their paradise, okay? They have to be able to know that you're gonna take them from hell to paradise. Step two in this process to increase your conversion rates more consistently all the time <laughs> is to really understand where did this lead come from or where did you find this person online? And there's two different types of leads you're gonna get. You're gonna get someone who may find you on social media and they'll come in through what I call the top of the awareness funnel and they may or may not have the problem and the urgency with which they want to solve the problem. The social media lead, whether they came from a YouTube channel, they came off of your Facebook page or your post or something in the social arena, there's a good possibility that they're missing one of the four criteria that would even make them a lead in the first place. What do I mean? What's important about that is if someone finds you on social media, they might be interested in solving the problem. They might even acknowledge that they have the problem, but they might be missing the components of BANT that have to do with timing, budget, and authority. Even if they agree that the need is present, which is what the N stands for. So they Googled you, they found your ad, they clicked on your YouTube ad. Obviously they could click on ads on LinkedIn and Facebook, etc. But generally speaking, we're having this conversation when people are arriving on your website from Google, maybe you've been blogging, maybe you're running Google ads, which is something we do, Bing ads, whatever it may be, and you're bringing people into your funnel. Why aren't they converting? When someone goes on to Google and you were successful either getting ranked on the first page of Google, your blog post, your sales page, your service page, your home page, or you're in the ad section in the map or in the map section itself, or you're at the top of the page with Google ads, here's what you gotta remember and where everybody makes a mistake. You're not the only one there. You're not the only one they saw. Even if they clicked on your ad for 10 bucks, they clicked on other people's ads and entered other people's funnels or sales sequences, etc. And what we find a lot of times 
is you're not properly setting up the right response mechanism when someone goes through that process. Or you're setting up a system where it's not easy for them to find the answer to their query. Here's the biggest mistake I see with most of it is you landed them on a page that gives them 18 things to do. You didn't take them to an appropriate landing page. You didn't take them through appropriate sales page that resonates with the query that they typed in. You put up a one size fits all page and then you're wondering why you didn't get the conversion. So step number three in this process of increasing your lead conversion rates is having the right invitation for them to even become a lead in your world in the first place. It is elementary business in this game called digital marketing to make sure that when someone clicks on an ad that you're running and you're gonna pay to get the click and you're gonna pay to get the lead, that the invitation or the message or the lead magnet, if you will, on the other side matches what they clicked on. Here's an example of what's bad. And let's say the law firm practices in three areas of law. They practice business law, they practice bankruptcy, and maybe they practice estate planning. I'm just making this up as we go. But what happens I see all the time is I will see their ad campaign plus their ad groups and their keywords are advertising the area of, let's say, bankruptcy, chapter seven bankruptcy, let's say. And when I then audit the route of travel, when the lead clicks on the ad and ends up on the page, the page has something about bankruptcy, it has something about estate planning, and it has inevitably something about business law. And then me, as the user, as the customer, potential prospect, I have to hunt and peck my way around to even come into your world. What you're doing is you're making the lead work and you're making me have to figure out how do I get into your world? No, 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 no you have to make it crystal clear. Here's the very least thing you can do. Set up a page specifically for your bankruptcy keywords. You set up a page specifically for your estate planning keywords. You set up a page specifically for your business keywords. In this example, that's obviously not as, as deep as it would go. You gotta go a little bit deeper than that to get more specific, but you've gotta at least do that. You have to understand, going back to step one, what is the number one or two or three pain points that you already know they want to solve? You do this right, you will have people saying to you, your page just spoke to me. I can't believe it just seemed like you were reading my mind. And let's be clear, one keyword in an ad doesn't make you know that you're reading their mind because the keyword is broad. But what's really the problem? Did you address those FAQs on the page? Do you have videos on the page? Do you have a mechanism? That's what's gonna help you build trust. That's what's gonna help you build rapport. That's what's gonna help you stand out like the expert because they saw other people besides you. So if you wanna increase your lead conversion rates, you've gotta get specific about making sure you highlight that you understand where they're coming from in their pain. There is more money being left in advertising and marketing on the table because of this fourth step that's not being done in terms of increasing your lead conversion rates, and that is the vast majority. You're living on feast or famine based on the initial ad impression, the initial click, which might be two, four, five, 10%, and then you're complaining that you only got two, three, four, five percent conversion rate into your sales mechanism. Here's the thing you're missing. You're only capturing a fraction of the people that could be ready to buy today and you're not doing two things properly. Number one, you're not properly running multiple layered ad campaigns on multiple platforms such that if this person clicked on your ad today, Googled, clicked on your ad, landed on your page, whether they did or didn't opt into your place of sales process or not today, you're not following up with them anywhere else online. See, that's problem number one. So you've got to have an appropriate retargeting and multi-channel ad strategy. And you don't need to spend, for example, 85% of your budget will be on Google, let's say. Well, then you need to spread the other 10 to 15% out across platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera, whatever's relevant for your business. But you cannot just assume that because they arrived on Google, because you wrote a good ad or you hired an agency like ours and we wrote all the copy and we're the experts that we're gonna convert everybody who clicks on an ad. It's just not reasonable. Number two, you are retargeting or remarketing to those people that did not convert the first time through. My encouragement is you must think through, how do I get the right person to come through my door and push the wrong person away? 
It does no good to have your sales team talking to leads who are just looky-loos. It'd be better off that they don't convert on that page because that page is very specific to the problem they will solve. These are some of the problems that we see all the time in our agency helping clients. And I hope you will stop making these mistakes and improve your conversion rates on everything going forward. If you've enjoyed today's video, leave me a comment below. And if you have a question that you'd like me to answer in a future video, I'm happy to do that. Be sure to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this today. Share it with a friend if you think it could help. I'll see you next time.